Hello, this is Forever Free Brony. I am a musician from Auburn, Washington, and you are listening to the MBS show. Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 118. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. I'm back, baby. Yay. <sighs> Way too much time without uh, me showing up in the show. How are you guys doing? Fine, thank you. How how have you been? Like it's been a while. It has been a while. I have been uh, I have been better, to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. Bit of family drama here and there, bit of problems, um, a bit of an issue. I have been postponing a lot of streams. I'm working on this comic that, uh, as we are doing this show, I'm finishing the last page, and I'm finally gonna be able to move to my commissions. Yay! Yay. Yes! Yes! Ah, uh, feels so good. Ooh. It feels so good. Ooh, talking about commissions, talking about commissions. But no, I- I'm going to keep that for later when I finish everyone's um, round. So um, I- I'm going to keep that. Remember, James, ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> sure. Okay. okay. So um, next up, we got Rom. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Oh, yeah. Got the circle for A. How are you doing, man? Awesome. Awesome. Progressing one step at a time. Awesome. You've been practicing your Street Fighters? And more than just that. <laughs> uh, we had a match uh, after last week's recording, right? Yep. Yeah, we did. We, we were talking about, oh, Steam, Street Fighter 4 was on sale. Buy it. Like, okay, uh, I'll, I'll let it download. Oh, it's finished. Let's play. <laughs> Yay. Uh, that was fun. Seriously, that was fun. We need to do it Indeed. again. Right you are. Mm. So how, is, how are you doing, Rom? Excellent. Could have been better, but thank goodness not worse. Gotta look at things from a positive side. Hmm. Okay. Good philosophy. Yes. I heard that your chair broke. We're not talking about that. <laughs> I tried to fix that thing, and that thing just fell apart like a crumbled cookie. Even worse, you could at least eat the crumble of the cookie, but this chair was beyond repairs. Uh, so yeah, yeah and, and you cannot eat that chair. <laughs> and you cannot eat the chair. Not only do you have a lot of problems. So yeah. <sighs> okay. Also joining us for this week is Connor Ng. Greetings, Internet. Hey, Corona. How have you been doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Graduated. Working for this month. Then, then it's after the military. Oh, congratulations. And I'm sorry for you. <laughs> yeah, me, yeah, me too. Me too, man. Feels yeah. so good that you finished that. And I'm so sorry they have to go to the army. Yeah. We here in Malaysia also do that. Like, um, they recruit... Well, they don't recruit all, but they recruit a certain a select few to enter... The well, it's not really a military, but it's kind of a camp, and they only last for three months, while yours lasted for two years. Uh, it ranges from half a year to almost one year. Oh, okay. And the, and then you can like choose to go to officer school and actually be employed by the military. Ah, okay. Well, that's what I've heard. Like our country is a bit different, and yours is interesting. Singapore, they do that too, but it's an enrollment of two years, and it's a mandatory enrollment. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. and you're forced to go there when they call you. It's kind of a refresher course, just so you know how to shoot a gun. <laughs> yeah, we have those too. Yay! But anywho, that, that's good to know, uh, Connor, and congratulations on graduating. Thanks. And James, 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 ask. Uh, okay, hold on, let me check the script. Um, and then James gave a come hither look at Norman and said, wait a minute, who the hell wrote this? <laughs> God damn it. Well, hey, stop uh, writing your fanfics. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> how are you doing, Norman? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Um, aside from attending weddings all day long, I- I'm I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And well, you know what? You know what they say. As long as it's not your wedding, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <clears throat> and uh, you mentioned commissions, right? Yeah, I was talking about commissions because I'm doing many of those. Mm-hmm. Still have a, a big backlog of them that I have to catch up with. Yeah, but those people are going to have my he- uh, demand my head on a platter, and I will be happily giving it to them because God damn it, they want to get this finished. <laughs> don't Indeed. worry, don't worry. If I ever want your head, I'll ask ask for it in a pan. <laughs> <laughs> with a side of pile next to it, right? Uh, yep. But uh, since you guys are talking about commission, I, I did my own commission. Like, I, I asked for one. Oh! Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And guess who the artist is? Um, 
No idea. Ah, thrill. Ah, I wish. No, um, Mendo Pony. Oh, you commissioned oh Mendo Pony serious? for some? You're yep. commissioning Mendo Pony for music? Yep. Ooh, what is so he going to be composing for you? You know how the show doesn't have a theme song? It's almost been two years and we don't have a theme song. I'm surprised that oh. I can use uh, Will Anderson's song for almost two years now. But, you know, I, I, I thought, like, it's time to man up. It's time to get our own theme song. So the MBS show will have its own theme song done by Mando Pony. <laughs> oh, oh, kicking that to the next level, baby. Indeed. That's going to be good. That <laughs> is awesome. That is going to be my ringtone. <laughs> That's your jam. Yep, yep. And the best thing is, um, I, I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I told him it, it's a mixture of between Scar and Jazz. So, yay. No, it's perfect. I love Jazz. I like Jazz. No problem with Jazz. I love the saxophone. I, I don't understand anybody who has a problem with Jazz. Yeah, Jazz is nice. Well, it's on the taste. It's on the ears. Yeah, some people have taste. Other people have no taste. True. <laughs> jazz is nice, but I personally prefer heavy metal. Oh, yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. People have their own uh, choices, and I don't blame you, Corner. I was yeah. into heavy metal too. Yeah, I don't blame you either, even if you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Maiden all the way. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Sabaton Hi. all the way. Okay, that works too. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, our guest for this week is going to be running a super late, like ridiculously late. So um, he'll be coming on late. Like, I'll do some editing magic just so he would be on the guest He time. will come for you, to, to you from the war of tomorrow. <laughs> or maybe yeah. in a couple of weeks. Indeed. I would invite you, James and Rom, but the problem is it will be super late for you guys and I don't want to inconvenience you guys. Don't it's don't, not late, it's worry, like... It's um, fine. We are used to be excluded. And, oh, my, no. f- and my flash crashed, oh. which crashed the stream. What the oh. hell? <laughs> Uh, Firefox, why do you do this to me? Because Firefox is useless you. and you should, go to, you should go to Chrome. Yeah. <laughs> or Internet yeah, Explorer. Right. Even Internet Explorer is better than Firefox right now. Yeah, I guess. I, I am guess. so not joking. I'm not, being, I'm not being like sarcastic or anything. Internet Explorer has upgraded. It's so much better. You wouldn't even recognize it. Mm-hmm. And really? It's so much better now. James, you know who would be happy right now? Who? Dan. <laughs> That would be happy, yeah. He he has always said that IE is good. Uh, I know, and after years of and years of validation, he f- of like denial, he finally gets his validation. He's like the Sonic fandom of uh, Internet Explorer. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but does Chrome support Pony Hoop? Oh yes, it does. No, yeah, it oh, does. Okay, it does. Then. I'm happy. It does. It does. It does support it. Mm, but anywho, um. Besides guests, um, I'll insert the babble about guest time later on. But anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And Rom. Yes? It's your time to shine. It's news time already? No, housekeeping. Oh. All right. In housekeeping, Everfree Northwest is seeking new volunteer staff. A new position has opened in the tabletop gaming track called MLP CCG, which stands for My Little Pony Card Trading Card Game, was it? Collectible, Collectible Card, card Game. game. Oh, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Knowledge expert. If you love the MLP CCG and happen to be an expert on the game's rules, we'd be excited for you to join in the ever-free team doing something you truly love by by helping participants in the MLP CCG stick to the rules. You can apply for the position by filling our applications in this link in the show notes below. We're looking for volunteers for the other awesome positions, such as a few of the following. Media liaisons, deployment deputies, logistics support staff, dispatch staff, radios, registration staff, vendors hall staff, electronic gaming staff, production crew, stagehands, and line minions, plus security staff. Check these and the other positions out online via volunteer website. We'll see you soon for three days of awesome convention events. Yay, plug. and. This is awesome. They have the card game there and they want judges. And if you all like the card game and you live in the States, go, go, go. And if you don't, run away before it's too late and it causes your life and it just invades <laughs> you forever, taking all your money 
and the people you love away from you just for you to gather another card. I need the special 2012 Latrochai foil. It has to be mine. Mine. Oh, talking about that, I got a Big Mac foil from one of my packs that I got. You see? You see what this card game does to people? Look at Norman. Don't be like him. You have such a life ahead of you. Okay, Norman. <laughs> but no, honestly speaking, um, if you want to help them do that, it's fun. So, uh, <clears throat> but anywho, e- enough plugging for now. Let's move on to the next topic, and next topic is news time. Well, that escalated quickly. Indeed. You want me to read the first one, Rom? Because no, I'll do it. I got this. I got this. All Thanks. Right, then. Welcome to the MBS Show News. I am your host with the most, Romuald. In today's news time, Nostalgia Critic makes another brownie joke. In, re- in the recent Nostalgia Critic review, he made a joke where whenever anyone said pony, he gets page views. Also, Pony Ghost Rider made an appearance again. Check it out in the show notes below. Yay, James. I, I that think... was... Yeah, yeah. No, that was... I, I can't... I, like that joke, you kind of see it, see it coming. The the Ghost Pony Rider one. As soon as you see the Ghost Riders, the Ghost Riders in the sky. By the way, <laughs> that Blues Brothers movie, uh, that movie sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't rip it. He didn't rip it apart enough. Yeah, no, really, it's an absolute piece of crap. <laughs> and there is I one like- part of the movie where where they start playing Ghost Riders in the sky, and literally the the four horsemen of the apocalypse start prancing around the sky and I'm like what the hell am I looking at <laughs> so yeah the joke kind of like wrote itself the one that he didn't see coming was the brony bump <laughs> the, every time you say pony on the internet this page views go through the roof <laughs> that is so true and that is such a funny joke because it's, it's true it's perfect it's absolutely hilarious but you know it's true because think about it Equestria Daily posted it up on uh, their website and we bronies click on it we watch the video and the video gets page views. Yeah, <laughs> but it's sense. cool because but, but you know what? Here's the difference. Um, this has happened before. Uh, uh, okay, perspective. All the way back in the world of 2009, we have the Nostalgia Critic making a review of Sonic uh, of the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm-hmm. And at one point, in order to give contrast, he starts talking about Sonic's at AM, oh. which was a very good show. Uh-huh. And he makes a furry joke. He makes a joke about furries. For Affinity posts the video and gives it the spotlight, and the result is a drama storm. <laughs> well, we are not like that. We are not like that. Oh my god, he's not portraying us properly. He's not portraying us fairly. And that's why the critic hasn't done a single furry joke ever since. Oh, yeah. However, however, he made that uh, a somewhat extended uh, a skit about um, uh, the, the daughter, the, no, the daughter of the devil being into My Little Pony <laughs> and uh, singing the theme song, talking about Fluttershy, discussing about the show, uh, talking about the show with Chad Rocco from Familiar Faces and all that. And that had such a positive response. He made another joke and then another one, and then he escalated with in the Ghost Rider review, where he brings in Fluttershy again. Talking with Ghost Pony Rider in, in, in such a badass way, and people loved it. In, in like there was from what I from what I uh, saw in the video comments, there was no hatred from Bronies. There was kind of hatred from people who don't like Bronies, but the the Bronies very much enjoyed it. And to be honest, uh, that was awesome. I mean, that is so metal, Ghost Pony Rider. That's so cool. Yeah, it and is. To, and of course, seeing it coming back, and of course, the critic was very happily uh, making another. Another note to that, and that is true. And it's like because we like it, we are happy mm. with it. We don't feel offended because he's not taking a jab at the fandom. Uh, we are happy because he's adding something to it. Yeah, and technically, what he said is true because think about it. Somebody says ponies, they get page views. Like Jet Blue mentions ponies, boom, it gets views. People yeah. are following Jet Blue. Um, now they are now they have uh, an OC pony, an OC Jet Blue pony, and uh, they have become the. The, the brony airline <laughs> like if you if you fly with them to brony conventions they give you discounts really yes huh. how how do they know that you're going to a brony convention oh because they uh they uh you can say oh i'm going to a brony convention oh really well you, you can uh, get this discount or you can get this or you can get that they uh they do really go wow. to their website really no. wow it, it is cool. yeah it is it is the, they are really cool i love jetblue it sucks that they don't fly in europe 
yeah, they're they're a local American company. Yeah, still they are, but they're cool. Uh, still, still, that that's awesome. Like, uh, I I think they I think they even put uh, episodes of Friendship is Magic during the flight. So oh, that's cool. From what I know, from what I know, I think they. Do, I'm not sure. I think they. I think they do. Mm. Oh, true, true, and the the critic himself. He's seen a few episodes of it and he says it's pretty okay. It's interesting, but it's not his kind of show. You know, he he didn't really... Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah he did say that in the audio commentary for Son of the Mask, which mm-hmm. is when he started making all of these pony references and uh, all of these brony, uh, brony uh, shout-outs and all that. And yeah, he did say that the show is fine, that it's much better than the original TV show and that... Uh, he has watched a couple of episodes and all, the, and all that. He feels like it's it's teaching good morals and it's it has good messages, but that indeed it is not his thing. However, mm. if he keeps referencing the show so much and if he keeps referencing us, the same way he's making those Adventure Time vlogs, yeah, something tells me at one point he's going to be <laughs> like like he's going to make a video saying "Don't say a thing." <laughs> and it's, it's it, the title of the t- of the video is going to be like "Don't say anything," and it's going to be just him looking angry, showing the uh, all the the episodes, the, like the, all the season facts, saying, "Starting this Monday, don't say a thing." <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know that he did a uh, kind of a uh, vlog about the pony episode in uh, on April first? Yeah, on April Fools, he made a review of the season one, the the the. the Series pilot. He made mm. a review of the pilot as if like it was an Adventure Time episode, but no, it's a Pony episode. But that and that's cool because the people that he does the Adventure Time episodes with, they are bronies. They they <laughs> like My Little Pony. They watch My Little Pony. But he does He's yeah. from what for all I, from all, uh, for all I know, Doug Walker is not going to become a brony oh, anytime yeah. show no. or, or watch the show or anything. He's too busy doing reviews. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Understandable, mm-hmm. really. But it would be cool to see his opinion on the show, though. Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, let's just hope he's not like the current run of Brony analysts. But is he doing him uh, doing it in his you own know what? style? It's like I think that Doug Walker wouldn't analyze the show. I think he he is more more simplistic than all that. Um, if people kind of get confused when the whole, whole nostalgia critic Doug Walker, which one is which. The nostalgia critic is clearly a character. Oh, it, yeah. it, uh, it overanalyzes and overexaggerates everything for the sake of comedy because he is kind of like a cartoon character. He is like if, if, you, if you mix Roger Ebert with Daffy Duck, that's the, that's the nostalgia critic. That's what he is. And Doug Walker is not like that. He enjoys the shows for what they are. So if he ever makes Friendship is Magic reviews... I, I will tell you, he's going to be a lot more lenient than the the current batch of brony analysts that we have. He's not going to be screaming for world building. He's not going to be screaming for out of character. He's not going to be uh, hating episodes just because so and so writer wrote it or anything. He's going to be into it. Uh, he's going to be reviewing it from a purely subjective point of view, and he's mm. not going to be nitpicky about it. Indeed, indeed. Because Doug Walker is not nitpicky. People don't get it. The nostalgia critic is nitpicky. Doug Walker isn't. Mm-hmm. But anywho, let's leave on a high note and move on to the second news. Rom? Roger, roger. And another news. Another Transformer Cross Pony comic cover coming soon. <laughs> In the past, we've mentioned that there were a few Transformers Cross Pony covers. First, there was Optimus Prime and Pinkie Pie. Then there was Starscream and Rainbow Dash. Now, they will be... One with Megatron and Nightmare Moon. The cover depicts Megatron holding a hologram of the Earth and Nightmare Moon holding the Moon. Not much info is given about the cover, but expect it to be a convention special variant. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yay. The way you say Megatron, it sounds like you he's like sitting on a throne. You know, <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's Mega- my chair. It's Megatron, <laughs> man. Megatron. <sighs> Sorry. I do I for one. I, for one, welcome our new robotic pony overlord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I don't know. I don't know what to think about the level of threat, because Megatron is the the bad guy that is like, aha, I'm going to destroy you, punk. Oh, I get defeated again. And he never, he never gets to, uh, he never gets to win. He never wins. Mm-hmm. 
I'll get you next time, Gadget. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll get you next time, Optimus Prime. <laughs> his plans are always foiled. It's kind of like... feels kind of sad for him at one point, well, to be honest. He is the bad guy, and bad guys never win. That's the yin gang philosophy. Oh, That's yeah. the... Yeah, well, that is the that is the Hasbro philosophy. Remember, this is all. Not only are both Hasbro properties, but mm -hmm. uh, IDW does bo both mm -hmm. the Transformers and the My Little Pony comics. So this crossover makes sense. They did have Pinkie Pie with Optimus Prime and Rainbow Dash with Starscream, right? Yep, yep. yep. Those were convention mm -hmm. variants, and um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that this one, the Megatron and Nightmare Moon, is going to be another convention variant, and. <clears throat> The art looks good. Like, I don't. Rem I, they didn't mention who drew it, but it looks good. I thought it looked good. It, it looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. The art is very good. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's what you're used to with these kind of like special variants. It's mm. like the art is always pretty awesome. Oh, that's true. That's true. I I, I like how IDW and Hasbro are putting a lot of effort into just creating covers. Like, think about it. It's just covers. You don't really need. More than one. Do you? That's what I think. But still. That's um, what you said. Yeah, you know what, Norman? You're an idiot. You <laughs> need all of the covers. Shut up. Go get them. I know the content is always <laughs> the same, but the cover, man, it's like owning, a, it's like owning an, a museum piece. It's like you're buying that and you're like, oh my god, this is so cool. I need to put them one next to each other and yeah, that's perfect. It's like, what, what else do you want? It's like having a masterpiece hanging on your wall. How many pictures do you have of Starscream and, and Rainbow Dash together in the same shot that are official? That uh, one? True only that, that one. I, I the same like goes to... with the Nightmare Moon and, and Megatron one. Mm. I would personally like to get the uh, issue number one derpy cover variant. That one was cute. Oh, dude, that has to be... That one has to be rare now. Yeah, that, that was a while now. That was a while now. 2012 is when it was first released. That was a while ago, what, two years now? Yeah, yeah, like at the end of 2012 is when the comics started to be released. <laughs> and wow, the comic has gotten good, and I don't feel like it's gotten bad at all. Like, oh, well, there's a few drop points, but that didn't um, stop me from... There are, a couple of, there are a couple of comics that could have been better. There are a couple of comics that couldn't have been better. But overall, it, they are keeping a very good quality. Very good mm -hmm. sense of quality, very good standards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's true, that is true. But anywho, um, Rom, next one, please. Okay, dokly. <coughs> Images of Series 2 Funko Mystery Minis have appeared. Pictures oh, of yeah, Funko... those are cool. Mm -hmm. Pictures of Funko's My Little Pony Series 2 Mystery Minis have popped up, and what's included is surprising. If you don't know, the Mystery Minis are scaled down versions of vinyl figures. In this set, you can expect to get Princess Twilight Sparkle, Trixie Lula Moon, Applejack, Babe Macintosh, Rarity, Daring Do, and Discord. Yes. Yes. I'm, they I'm just gonna come did I'm just one gonna, of Discord. Yeah, I'm just going to come on and say I want a Discord. <laughs> that uh, Discord lo looks awesome. Fun fact, guys. Fun fact. Discord has not come out with a vinyl yet. Yeah. It dun, dun, so, dun. Yeah, so we got spoilers for this one. So, uh, and. Unless that they're not going to produce Discord in the vinyl and make it exclusive for the minifigures, uh, this is wow! Like Discord, wow! Uh, and this is this this is the second time that well, no, that this is the third villain that gets turned into a toy in this in this generation. That's so mm. awesome! You know, you know how many toys of the bad guys from Generation One are are out there? None. None. Yes. <laughs> Not one. And this generation? Three. Mm -hmm. We have Nightmare Moon, we have Crystallis, and we have Discord. Mm, true that, true that. Awesome. But, you know, we've back to the Funko vinyls. Uh, I have one. Um, I got the Glow in the Dark vinyl, and she looks amazing. And Really? Uh, yeah, she looks amazing. Like, her small size and all, it looks exactly like the... Um, original version which was the Funko vinyl and she scaled down I think by 30% to a small pocket size that you can keep and she glows in the dark and well she's also black and certain things like okay I forgot to mention this uh, this phony figures they come in black like their coat is black yeah they are fully black because you know hot topic emo yeah. oh. 
really. But, but still, but still. Uh, and then you put you put mascara on them with uh, uh, with <laughs> socks and everything, and it's like there you go. You, what I am describing the new toy line that they're releasing. <laughs> oh god! But no, he's but... Alice with mascara and 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 socks and all that. It's wow. like wow, Flufflepuff really is going all out on her <laughs> issues. <laughs> but 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 um, with with the current thing we have now. Um, they have Rarity, Daring Do, and Discord. So these are the three toys that haven't been released yet. And we got a sneak preview on the Funko Minis. So that's awesome. And James, I know you want the Rarity. The movie <laughs> looks good. You know what? To be perfectly honest, I want an Applejack more than I want a Rarity. Really? No. Yeah, because she has a hat. <laughs> <laughs> James, <laughs> you're on the right path. It's the most accurate look. Like, my Applejack has a more accurate hat. I'm showing it on the stream. We're not seeing it in the podcast, but she has a hat. It's a cardboard hat, mind you, but I put a hat on her head. Yeah, and I, I recently got the Applejack Funko minifigure. Uh, no, not minifigure, but the Funko vinyl. And it looks good. It, it looks really good. Like, I, I enjoyed it. And also Big Mac. Oh, Big Mac looks awesome. Those, but these, these toys, these figurines, they are uh, clearly... Uh, uh, focus to uh, uh, aim towards us. I don't. I, I, for the lo- for the life of me, I cannot imagine a, a little girl playing with one of those toys because they look so stiff and they don't articulate. Not in, well, not like uh, not like the original toys articulate that much, but at least they move their heads and you can style their manes and everything. These are solid. These yeah. are the type of figurine that you put on your bookshelf and you just leave them there and that's it. Yeah, but I think the little girls want them too because it's accurate. Like, oh, looky here, I have my Trixie. Yay, she's awesome and powerful. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Who are you, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> did, we, did, we leave, did, did we leave the door open and Seth sneaked into the stream? <laughs> <laughs> no comments. <laughs> and look at my Trixie Playman and also my Trixie card sleeve. Mmm. Shut up, Norman. <laughs> Nobody cares about Trixie. Oh, she's, I she's, do. She's she's worst, most overrated, stupid, hat looking pony, and nobody loves her. And she's like, <laughs> "Oh my God, what the hell is wrong with her head?" Stop being mean to my nah, wife. She's now. Nah, okay. I I I just, I just cannot wait for people to start sending me angry messages and just reply. <laughs> them. But guys, I really like Trixie. Shut up, Nor- yeah. Norman. Yo. Norman. Will you tie him up if I get the shotgun? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I like Trixie. She's cool. <laughs> I like... Uh, am I going to get into a tangent here and talk about <laughs> how I like Trixie, but I don't like the way that people portray her in the fandom? Uh, yeah, I well, like I'm... Trixie, but I don't like the way you guys portray her. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> you yeah, don't man. get the character. You so don't get the character of Trixie. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> All you fanfic writers, you need someone to tell you you are doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, because you are. Uh, but anywho, with that out of the way, and I can't wait for the Discord. Um, I can't wait for the Discord vinyl. Uh, Rom, the last one, please. MLP and Daniel Ingram win at Leo Awards. The Leo Awards. <clears throat> the Leo Awards were held during the weekend, and Daniel Ingram, Stefan Andrews, and MLP won big. While well, MLP won the best overall sound, Ingram and Andrews won the best musical store for their work on My Little Pet Shop. Musical score. <laughs> and uh, oh, Little yeah, Pet Shop, My Little, not My Little <laughs> Pet Shop. You just made a crossover. What, is, what the hell did you do, man? <laughs> okay, I'll start over. No, 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 it's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> Let's move on. Keep on going. This one goes for the blooper rail. <laughs> All right. What are the Lee Awards? They are the British Columbia Awards event celebrating the film and television industry. Yay. Uh, James, you wanted this in, right? Can yeah, I do my, yeah, I wanted... my outro first? Oh, sure, I, sure, sure. I, really wanted, I really wanted to talk about this one, James, but go ahead. Uh, Rome, do the go ahead, Romy. Go ahead, Romy. MB- <clears throat> I am Romy all with the MBS show news. Back to you, Norman. Yay. And I'll cut everything. And James, go. You're such a pussy, Romwald. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at me. I am professional newscaster. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to make a portfolio here. <laughs> look, you are not a safe mommy, and this is not the, the Daily Show, okay? It doesn't matter how hard you try. He could be Ron Burgundy. 
You cannot be as likable as Asif Mambi. It's impossible. Nothing is impossible if you really want to. No, really, you can't. He's Asif Mambi. It's impossible Maybe. to get better than him. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, but yeah, I wanted, I wanted to talk about this one because people forget about uh, uh, award ceremonies. And I will be the first one to say they are pointless and all that. But when it comes to the industry, sometimes it's good to get, I don't know, something for your hard work. Like an award or something be considered the best at one thing. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really cool. And I'm going to geek out like crazy because the episode that won, uh, the episode of My Little Pony that won uh, best overall sound was Power Ponies. <laughs> Take that, critics. <laughs> so much for a forgettable episode because it's a Spike episode. Hey? That's not a word. <laughs> 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 you thought you 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 were like oh so high on my analyst throne ah oh, I ditched that episode because it's a spike episode yeah there you go that's not a word <laughs> you fucking idiot. God. but you know what ah, uh, congratulations good, to them good. they did a pretty awesome job and you know what yeah yeah I, I can uh, see uh, I, I enjoy Power Ponies uh, I said it before it was not that bad and the sound well. They won something, so it got to it be was, good. It was quite something that they did. They did have to nominate out of all the episodes that the season had to offer. They did nominate that one and Pinky Pride, and uh, people were kind of outraged that Pinky Pride lost to Little Sped Shop. But you don't have to re- don't, you don't have to forget that My Little Pony already won that award with Magical Mystery Cure. Mm-hmm. It, it won it back in 2013. It won in the Leo Awards for Best Overall Music for uh, for the last episode for the season three finale. So it's like, okay, that's good. Now time for uh, for another award for them. And hey, it's going to Daniel Ingram, who is working very hard on Little Pet Shop as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like it doesn't it doesn't matter the TV show, it doesn't matter the movie, or it doesn't matter what it is, as long as uh, the person that you're rooting for is winning something. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And you know what? I've uh, heard Pet Shop's music, and it's not that bad, guys. Like, Pet oh Shop, come on, it's awesome. Yeah, Pet Shop is a it's good awesome. show. It, it's if you like ponies, like right now, um, it's a ponyless summer drought. There's no ponies except for the comics. Go watch Pet Shops. It's a good alternative. It's, it's a mix between Happy, Happy Tree Friends and My Little Pony. It has the writing of My Little Pony with the animation of Happy Tree Friends. Yeah, okay. It is awesome. Give it a watch. It's a very good show. Yeah. Really. Really. And it has people like Nicole Oliver, Peter New, Tabitha St. Germain, Ashley Ball. They are all in the show. You know them from MLP. Mm-hmm. You should give this show a watch. And, have... and it is, in the same way, it is really good because it makes you forget that they are promoting a toy. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really promote the toy at all. Like um, like MLP, you can tell. The helicopter, the train, the blimp, uh, the hot air balloon, mind you. Uh, and the, house, the house, the castle, yeah, they're pro- pro- the princess cadence. Yeah, they all promote the yeah. toys. But for pet shops, I can't tell what's the toy in there. A new pet comes in, Okay, it's a new pet. Like, okay, <laughs> doesn't spoil the story for it's, me. In the in the same way that MLP is a character driven show, same goes with Little oh, Pet Shop. Uh-huh. It's re- it's very good. Mm-hmm. You guys, you guys give it a watch. Really, it's and it has the same process as uh, MLP in that you watch a couple of episodes and you're like, ah, what is this that I'm watching? But then after a couple of episodes in, you're like, oh, that is actually really enjoyable. Yeah. People from the show have written on Pet Shop as well. Like, M.A. Larson has a couple of episodes to his name. Mm-hmm. You would have watched too. He, yeah, yeah. He puts wings on every single one of the pets. You're, it's awesome. You guys are going to love it. <laughs> you joke, but it's an episode of that. <laughs> but honestly speaking, uh, I've watched it and I enjoyed it. Like the season finale for Pet Shop, there's this one music. Uh, there's not really music, but the you know music cue that they do. It's pretty catchy, and I like it. The 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 first time I heard it, I played it on loop for like ten times in a row. So it was pretty good. I, I liked it. Well, only ten times. Well, I'm I'm just scaling it down f- to make myself look normal. But yes. <laughs> Ha ha ha! Implying you're normal. Go to your corner. I am already here. You know that. <laughs> but but still, um, do give Pesha a watch, and it's pretty awesome. If if you can, uh, find a way to watch it, and uh, awesome. <coughs> but enough pet shop talk. And cool, uh, and cool that they won an award. Mm-hmm. Very well. Deserved. Very con- uh, a lot of congratulations. Like you guys deserve yes. it. 
other than that, like, what else do we want? Um, what else do you have to say about these games? Well, no, not much. Other than um, had it won, had it lost, it couldn't have mattered because it's just an award show and nobody gives a crap about those. Uh, they are just awards, but it feels nice to want something. It, it feels nice, nice to say, award-winning TV show. Yeah, I'm a fan of this. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I could only say that about Game of Thrones, but now I can say that about My Little uh, Pony as well. It feels good. James, there, did you know that there's a Game of Thrones board game and a Game of Thrones card game? I wonder uh, how that game plays. Oh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> but anywho... Sorry? And there are two video games of Game of Thrones. Uh, I don't count they the video are very games. Bad as well. the, the video games are not fun. They are horrible. I don't know. They are, the... actually genuinely, they are genuinely bad. <laughs> I don't know. The role-playing game seems, seems okay. Uh... Uh... <laughs> Opinions. We have them. <laughs> Mine are usually better than yours. Uh... <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Even though you're wrong. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, but but anywho anywho um that's the end of news time and here is where the guest comes in and hello ladies and gentlemen this is guest time and our guest for this week is forever free brony hello hey there Dooney, how are you doing i'm doing just fine <laughs> awesome awesome and how rude of me not to introduce my co-host for this segment and that's kitsune risu hello hey kitsune how are you doing man yeah i'm all right it's a little early in the morning. Mm. I'm not used to uh, waking up before one, <laughs> but that's all right. What are you? Some kind of rock star? No, just lazy. <laughs> that's that's really all I need to be, right? Uh, okay, I'll I'll buy that. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Um, but anywho, um, Goonie, welcome to the MBS show. Thank you for coming on. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah, the, the planning that we need to do for this, the planning that we needed to do for this. <laughs> it's all working out. Indeed, indeed. So before we start this segment, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who's your favorite character? My favorite character is Fluttershy. Yes. Because, just because, uh, you know, hey, 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 she, doesn't really, she doesn't really match my personality, but I get a bunch of laughs from her character and just, just I, I like the way that her character is built and... In ways, she does remind me of myself, but just generic shy person, just kind of to the max, I guess. <laughs> find it kind of funny. You like laughing at shy people? <laughs> Don't you twist his words. I'm not twisting his words is what he said. But you... defend, defend yourself, Goonie. Defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, well, uh, it, if I know that they're not a real character, then I don't mind. Uh, I, Yeah. Wait, wait, are you insinuating that <laughs> no, Butterfly no. is not real? Kitsu, Kitsu, you, you, sh- you shut up. You shut up. You're, 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 I'm blasting up a guest right now. So no, bad you, bad. Well, no. Fluttershy is a good choice. Mm-hmm. Right? It's I better agree. than rarity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the reason why he says that is because one of our co-hosts, James Cork, he, he is a major fan of rarity to the point where on his Tumblr page, he has a shrine dedicated to her. <laughs> So yeah, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't yeah, say exactly right. I, I won't say religiously, but See, you that's, know that's the problem. No, it is pretty religious. <laughs> no, you you. <laughs> so why do you like Fluttershy? I mean, uh, she, you besides just being able to laugh at people, um, I'm sure there's uh-huh. some redeeming qualities about her that you like, right? Yeah, I mean, she's kind of the most. I, I guess you want to say lovable character in this show. I've probably written most, I think, songs about her. Oh, I've yes, written, I I've written I quite, a, quite a few songs with her in it. So, I mean, it, it concerned her, at least. In fact, I think so. one of your uh, best songs was, uh, was about her and, and her shyness. In fact, you used it as a topic. But uh, we'll get into that a bit later, I think, when we uh, actually start talking about mm-hmm. your music. That's really um, true, all right. And second uh, question is a uh, favorite episode. Uh, my favorite episode. Oh, I just, I was just thinking about it. Um, uh, I, I don't remember, but what, what was it? I... All right. Yes. Now I do remember it. It was um, Hurricane Fluttershy. Hmm, why Hurricane Fluttershy? It's the first episode that I ever watched um, of the show. And so, I mean, it, it left a pretty good impression on me. 
I, I don't know. I don't know what there. There were certain attributes of it that it just kind of stuck out to me, like um, the uh, kind of believing in yourself uh, factor in it. Like you may not be very good at so, at something, but if you but if you try really hard, you can you uh, you'll be able to achieve anything. So yeah, uh, mm. the the morals in the show really stick out to me. Hmm, that's true. That's true. I mean, the morals for well, this show in particular, it's really out there. Like it tells a moral, it tells a lesson. Like you should learn this, remember this, be a good person. You stop being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> not, all, not not all of them have that message. But most majority of, the, of them. Most of the CMC episodes actually teach you to be idiots. <laughs> right. so, I I do not agree with that. I just I just want to put it out there. Uh, anyway, actually, Hurricane Fluttershy was the uh, you said was the first episode that you ever watched in the yeah. whole, in the whole series. Hmm. Uh, that, yes. That's interesting because that's actually quite a late episode and mm-hmm. uh, quite a. A curious one to start with. Uh, yeah. there, there's a story behind this, I'm sure. And there's a good sort segue, Kitsu. There's a good segue. And how did you become a fan of the show? I became a fan of the show because um, I was introduced to it by uh, my best friend. And I, I was very skeptical at the time and I thought I wouldn't like it. He showed me like bits and pieces of the first episode and I just didn't quite catch on to it yet. And then when he was gone, when he left on... When when he left for a while, um, it was kind of left in my mind that uh, I should probably I should probably at least take a look at it. And while I was uh, you know browsing YouTube, uh, I just saw uh, I saw a pony video. I saw a pony related video just about every other uh, time I watched something. <laughs> I saw it like in the sidebar. Um, so. I decided there's got to be something. There's got to be something to the to the whole pony fascination thing, and so I decided to take a look at just an episode, and I saw one that looked kind of interesting, I guess, and I wa- and it happened to be Hurricane Fluttershy, and I was like, wow, you know what? This is really good. That's a good way to start. Yeah, I was back in like July of 2012, so hmm. yeah, that's that's kind of it was. It was already pretty far into the show, and season three was about to start. So, but but still, yeah. but still, you, you got to rush through season one and two just to get everything. That, that's awesome. Yeah, after that, I spent about a whole week watching the entire, the entire uh, series. Uh, those were good times, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> but but still, but still, um, I find it funny that. Your YouTube had ponies on the side. Like, how did that ever happen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. What I meant was, if you watch a video in the related videos on the side, it'll have some sort of. It always had some sort of pony related thing in there. It was just yeah. kind of annoying, kind of odd. It? <laughs> I yeah. mean, it was it was kind of annoying, uh, but at, at the time. But then I actually watched the show. And, so but the thing is, not annoying. Um, with, with that on YouTube, you need to at least watch a few for them to suggest that to you. But uh, did, during that time, did you watch any pony videos before that? No, it was just things that happened to be related to that. You don't yeah, really yeah, have so, to. So you don't really yeah. have to, based on your... You don't really have to... It doesn't really base it off of your history all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it just bases, bases it off of things that are... That are related to that video, mm. things. So it's like suggested stuff. Mm. You know. Suggesting that ponies are related to everything. <laughs> that is true, I'm and sorry. I and I would just say it's destiny. <laughs> <laughs> destiny yeah. is destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever got the reference, ten point to you, man. So um, last question is: What do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, my family they find they find it kind of weird. I mean, at least my parents do, and my mm. older brother does. Hmm. But uh, and one of my other brothers does, but uh, the rest are kind of okay with it. And one is a fan of the show as well. My sister's all. My sister also loves the show. Hmm. Um, and my brother uh, likes to make music with me. He hasn't put anything out yet, but he's going to uh, pretty soon here. Yeah, I mean they, they they find it kind of weird, but they they all support me in my in my uh, music writing, and even if even if I do write about ponies, so. Yeah. Um, it is bringing in the cash, so that's good. 
it, it yeah, it's yeah, that's really helped a lot. I've saved up for about half my mission, um, yeah, over yeah. half. Awesome, awesome, and well, um, that, that's awesome to have a supporting family doing whatever you're doing right now. Yeah, and well, those are the four important questions, and thanks a lot, Guni, for answering them. And well, since this is a very special segment or special recording, so we'll just move into guest time, and we have you, Guni, our uh, forever free brony on the show on the guest time and you're in the spotlight right now <laughs> how are you doing okay. i'm i'm doing fine <laughs> you see there's there's a gap between each segment where we kind of trail off we forget about the things that we asked earlier on and <laughs> kind of repeat <laughs> no, 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 again no, 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 no. Norman, you <laughs> forget okay what's going on <laughs> don't, don't put that on that don't put that on your co-host no, I'm gonna put it on you really hard. <laughs> I never, I never forget. That's what you say. Hey, what were we doing today? I got no idea. But anywho, <laughs> but anywho, Goonie, how are you doing, man? Having fun yet? Yeah, this is this is a fun interview. I gotta say, uh, different from the rest, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the interview with Everfree Network was some. It's it was like it was different. It was very. I don't know. Business maybe, like all serious. Maybe, maybe, maybe we will a little never find more... stupider than with us. Hey, <laughs> jeez! I <laughs> I bring not, a level it's... of idiocy to anything that I'm part of, and <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I have yeah. to work with. You were yeah, saying, just, Aguni? I was just saying uh, it's very it's very um, different interview. Uh, the one I had with Everfree Network was just it was kind of organized, but not really. Mm. organized they had like they they let me view the notes so i knew what was coming next but i it was just uh so they can um prepare the guest yeah they they can they can prepare the guest this one is a little more i don't know surprising for me i haven't really yeah i mean i i don't have a lot of experience with interviews so all this right. is all fun and games and uh, so this is surprising good or surprising bad <laughs> it's uh, it's just very it, it's it's fun. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, th- that's good. That's good. That's what we strive for, to make the guests feel at home and like they're hanging out with friends. N- no pressure, yeah. no pressure. Uh, feel free to take off your pants. If you <laughs> I'm good. This oh, is what that's I right. You don't mind if I do, right? Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks for the offer, but no thanks. This is what I have to work with. Oh, God. Yeah, you keep saying that, Norman. And I'm never going to go away, all right? So. I know. That's why I like you. That's why I love you on. <laughs> hey, all right. Before before we go on, though, mm-hmm. um, I think there's something interesting that I think uh, the audience also would probably like to know. Is that we've been calling you by a couple of different names so far. So, uh, names. Why do you have them? Where did they come from? Mm. Uh, first of all, for Everfree Brony, which is your main... Um, you know the mean moniker that you go by for your music. Where where did you get that from, and you know how did how did that come about? Okay, so actually it was uh, decided mostly by my friend uh, Dre Hart, and he. <laughs> it was kind of funny because he thought he, he knew that I was gonna become a, a brony musician at some time, so he decided to pick a name for me, and it was gonna be based off of uh, where I live. I live in uh, I live close to Seattle. Mm. Uh, you know, like in Auburn, Washington. Uh, so uh, he thought it would be interesting to base it off of that because we have a con really close to us, like Everfree 20 Northwest. minutes away, 20, 20 minutes away, Everfree Northwest. Like your name is actually related to Everfree Northwest. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. That's <laughs> so great. we were going to we were going to go with Everfree Brony. I mean, I didn't I didn't really want to put Brony in there just. Because you know, Slip Storm's got his cool name. Living Tombstone's got his cool name. I, t- I mean, I was like, why do we have to put Brony in there? For Pete's sake, what does that have to do with being a musician? I wanted it to sound cool and catchy, and you know, hip and hippity hop with the young kids. Yeah, just, just, yeah, exactly. So, I was, yeah, so, but I, I was. He said, ever he, we typed it in in the YouTube. And we and it, we discovered that it had already been taken. I was like, yes, I don't have to use Everfree Brony. And then he was like, how about four Everfree Brony? I was like, I was like you know what? That it's not bad, but still, I mean, at least the, at least the number four. He was like, yeah, what's the number four? He was like, I was like, you know what? Fine, 
let's just go with it. That will probably not be taken. And then I discovered that he didn't capitalize the E or the B. And I, and I, and it's still like that on the page. And so wow. it's just been, it's been, we um, it. well, it's a, it's a name, right? Yeah, it's a name. Yeah. And everybody seems it as, I, I guess mean, everybody just, sees it as kind of iconic now. Mm-hmm. So, if, yeah. if you had wanted to be, you know, something to do with Seattle, where you, where you live in, why don't you call yourself like the Space Needle Brody? <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't know, because that would be a dead giveaway. I mean, like, I didn't want, I didn't want everybody to like, I didn't want like everybody to know where I live. Just well, maybe you just they, like the they, Space Needle. Well, a just, lot. They ask. If they ask, I'll tell them, but not necessarily, like, into it. Well, congratulations, because you just oh, sold my. the whole world in this interview, so... But you do yeah. know that Seattle's a big place, right? So, unless they yeah. have... I, really... I'm not... Where is Seattle, exactly? New Washington. Washington. It's, it's, it's Washington. Western, Western Washington. All right. Sorry. I'm not from your part of the world, so... Yeah, not... that's okay. Well, that's still, okay. that's still... Um, for, um, the Ever Free Northwest Convention is a really awesome convention, and you should go to it. Like we've been plugging them really hard uh, for these past few episodes, and they should get well, all the attention. It's awesome. mm-hmm. And yeah, I want to go. I went. I went there last year, oh. and I staffed in oh, logistics. Yeah. Ooh, that's you staffed really in logistics? You should have been playing. No, I I couldn't sign up soon enough, and plus my my YouTube didn't have. Even a, a great reputation <laughs> uh, on it yet. So, I mean, okay. I, I I hadn't even released Emerald Eyes yet, the first version of it. Mm-hmm. So, it was Emerald Eyes was my first really big song, and that was, and so it was before that, and I I couldn't I I couldn't imagine myself uh, performing there uh, without all the stuff that I have um, on my uh, channel now. Right? Yeah, my. I guess my reputation. Mm, understandable, yeah. understandable. So, um, so before we really move on, um, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm a brony musician, and I'm li- I like to make music, but uh, I'm also uh, I'm also a- an artist, and I am I draw sometimes, but I don't have like a big deviant dark page or anything but i can draw and but mostly i make music about um <clears throat> make music about ponies obviously uh but uh i do acoustic stuff um i i don't i, I usually write soft rock and i put a lot of um uh, meaning into my lyrics and my main the main thing with my music is just um, I'm a very acoustic musician and I do everything by hand. Mm. So, that's, so that's who I am. And I've come to gain 7,000 subscribers over about a year and a half now, or a year and a quarter now of being a brony musician. Yeah, I, I noticed that on your, uh, what was it, Skype messaging? Yay, 7,000 viewers. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So you're a brody musician, and obvious question is, how did you get involved in the music part of the fandom? Uh, uh, my friend Dre, I'm referring to him again. He mm-hmm. showed me a bunch of brony musicians, like how, like the quality of their music. Uh, it just surprised me. Uh, like one of the first songs that he showed me was "Kindness" by Ooh. Mando Pony and Acoustic Brony. Um, and it just, it really surprised me. There was some good guitar riffs in there, and the lyrics were kind of meaningful. And I could, I guess I could sort of relate to them, but they're not, they're, they're pretty broad, I guess, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, as as you, as you uh, those kind of lyrics usually are. But uh, after that, uh, he introduced me to several other things, like, you know, the Rainbow Factory mm-hmm. and, uh, like, Awoken and Friendship by Aviators. So those those songs just kind of uh, they were the start of the whole uh, music scene for me in the fandom. And then he said, "You know what? It'd be really cool if you could write your own stuff about um, about the show." And I I was just kind of skeptical at first, and 
I didn't really think much about it, and then I found myself writing my first song called Bird Song. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I actually I kind of live in a very uh, tree covered place, tree covered area in my neighborhood. Um, it's so I hear lots of I hear birds every day, and I couldn't help but think of like how that would sound in a song. And so um, after that, it brought me back to the um, oh to the uh, just any any episode with Fluttershy. And I just kind of, you know, I was like, you know, this would actually be really relatable. <laughs> and so I found myself writing about Fluttershy um, and and her love for animals. And I thought it'd be a cool concept. And it turned out pretty good for a first song, I guess, based on what I've seen in the fandom. But the, the main thing that really, really sucked in my quality was the drums. So, I mean, it was all put in through one input. Oh, so uh, I mean, I have I just drummed on a keyboard that I have that had an already preset drum set, and it's just it was just awful, 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 and uh, so that's that's really my start in the music fandom. And the music scene was music scene was already pretty interesting. I decided that I'd put my piece in there, and I never expected it to shoot for forward like it did. <laughs> it's just awesome. Well, I'm looking at your um, YouTube gallery or page right now, and you have a huge buttload of songs, like the most, un- well, I-, I won't say unsuccessful, but the most not really known is uh, Ben. Ben? Ben? Yeah, Ben. Yeah, Ben. That just only got about 1,000, almost 2,000 views. And you know what? Uh, that's... Sad. It's a Discord song. Why is it not getting popular? <laughs> well, it just came out like I, a couple of days ago. No. I, no, 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 not that one. The old one. That's oh. You're talking to her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, it, it was like my, the third song that I put out. It was... Uh, so that was released somewhere sometime in April as well. Oh, the, the original band. Mm. Yeah, the original yeah. band. Your uh, second version is doing a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's already more popular. <laughs> I put that out. I put that out just a couple of days ago. So, yeah. mm. so I, I do notice this on your channel. You, you like to, um, as they say in the business, HD remix your song. <laughs> oh yeah. I, well, not. Well, I guess you could call it a remix. It's really a remaster or a re-record or revamp is what it's called. Revamp. Well, you, um, you know, one yeah. of, one of the things that definitely I want to say is that your choice to keep to traditional music is. It's cool. it's a very very good one uh, for me at least because I'm I'm a bit more of a fan of this you know kind of music where people actually play real instruments. I'm of course not saying that other forms of music are bad, but they are. And um, you know, one one of the things that I want to ask right is that in this world where, as you know, uh, synth music, you know, a uh, dubstep. You know, things which are basically done on a computer tends mm-hmm. to be a lot more popular right now, you know, in the trend, as they say. So what what made you decide to stick with uh, traditional, you know, the more traditional types of music, which is, which is, again, to me, something really good because I feel that we're moving away from, yeah. from uh, you know, the more technical aspects of music. Uh, to yeah. do something just more akin to programming. It's not. It's not bad, but it's it's different. So why why traditional for you? Well, it's kind of what I was raised on. My mom and dad uh, they always they would always listen to you know like some classic rock and some soft rock here and there. Usually, I never really got a good message from um, the more electronic music uh, side of things. Um, so like uh a lot of rap is just not really my thing and it's never really been kind of uplifting. I always try to make my music at least have a some sort of moral in it. You know, kind of I never really write about bad stuff. Uh so um and a lot of classic rock there is a bunch of bad classic rock out there but uh, but I was raised on stuff like the Eagles and Boston and um, uh, maybe some uh, Bon Jovi or 
let's see, uh, Kansas, mm, stuff like that. Lion. What was that? White Lion. I've heard of them, but I've I heard of. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember them. That's fine. But uh, all yeah, the, all so, the choices so far, anyway. Yeah, that's so. It's kind of what I was raised on, and I, and and listening to that while taking piano lessons is kind of what I uh, is kind of how uh, my music formed. I, I've been recording ever since uh, before, uh, maybe 2011 or 2012, something like that. So. Of course, before I started as a brony musician, but I've always just seen acoustic music, stuff that's done by hand, you know, as the more, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what you call it, organic side of music. Mm-hmm. One that's more healthy for your your mind. life, but mm-hmm. your mind and your, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, yeah. And I, it gives me the sense of actually being able to do stuff and it's better to perform live. Mm. It shows that you're, you're. It's more entertaining mm. being up there on mm. stage. If you're going to perform uh, live, you, then you. I prefer to do it as an acoustic musician mm. rather than a DJ. No, understandable. So, understandable. Yeah, I, I can just look at it right now. Like certain artists or certain musicians in the fandom, uh, when they play acoustic, their song is really awesome. But like, it's best to go both ways that you can play electronic or like. Um, you play electronic guitars and so on and you can go acoustic on a whim no problem and you have a set ready if someone asks to go acoustic yeah yeah I I didn't really mean like non-electric guitars I just meant kind of you know yeah, stuff done by hand yeah. Yeah. Stuff holding holding an actual instrument or yeah. shoving an instrument yeah. in your mouth <laughs> acoustic music, acoustic music in the fandom at least is consi- you can even consider stuff with electric guitar in it mm. acoustic music because it's all done by hand. So, yeah. But I will I will give some credit to electronic musicians as well because it at least takes some music uh theory knowledge to actually understand it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and or it at least takes a good ear to know what people will like and mm-hmm. what makes sense. So, um I'm remembering certain things like um you your your career kind of blew up when uh every uh, when Equestria Daily posted one of your videos on the as a standalone um post. It was Open Your Eyes with Cup song. Oh. Yeah. I don't think it was a standalone but it was it was a spotlight music. Uh yeah, that was uh what about that one? Yeah, I remember looking at that, and that was really awesome. <laughs> and um, I think that got you out there, like um, got you really noticed in the fandom. Uh, that one wasn't the one that actually got me noticed in the fandom. Oh, really? That, really? Yeah, uh, the that one only has about sixteen thousand views, mm. whereas um, the one that really got me noticed was "Chant of Immortality." Um, the that one actually. So they have a top ten pony songs of each month, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, done by Paleo Steno. It's not on his channel. It's on it on anymore. It's not on his channel anymore. It's on uh, Top Ten Pony uh, on YouTube. You can find that. It's really easy to search. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do the monthly voting. And I uh, Chant of Immortality got the number one spot of November. Wow. So, so yeah, that was the they post the top tens uh, of every month uh, on Equestria Daily. And people view it all the time, and gets that. So the top tens get lots of views. Therefore, uh, whatever songs are on there get tons of views as well. Mm. Um, so that was the one that really got me noticed out there, and that's the song that I'm. That is my most well-known song. In fact, mm. it has over a hundred thousand views. Chant of Immortality mm. with Chichi. Personally, for me, when uh, th- what got you noticed in my eyes was the Cup song, and. That was really cool. That's the thing. In my eyes, that is really cool. And the way you produced the video, it was top notch. <laughs> Thanks. It was a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> I was trying to get it done before uh, December ended. Um, but, I mean, it, and it did get done, but it never really got the recognition that it that I, sh- I think it should have had because of because it was really under-noticed by a lot of people. Because they were mostly focused on the year voting instead oh. of the December voting, but that's okay. 
So that song was actually a lot of fun to do. We went over to our local uh, church and we recorded, um, we recorded uh, me like, I don't know, six times. We had to do several takes, but uh, we recorded me about, no, seven times, sorry, um, uh, for that. Um, and I uh, see, you know, have you, have you heard the cup song from Pitch Perfect yet? Um, no, not I, I okay. don't. Okay, so this lady takes a cup and she does that exact rhythm, just starting with the claps on the downbeat instead. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she sings a song, and they call it. They, it's called "When I'm Gone," mm-hmm. uh, and it has. It's just one of the most amazing things that you can do with music. Is just take a, a little cup and make a little drum beat out of it. It was pretty awesome. Anyways, uh, so no, 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 no. The most amazing thing that you can do with a cup is to sound like Bane. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> yeah, okay. Stop you. Well, anyways, yeah, anyways, still, anyways. Still. yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun to do. And Aviators thought that it was awesome that I took his song and um, uh, it just made a cool rendition of it. I actually mm-hmm. had to change the key of the song as well, so I, so I could actually you know play it on the guitar because it was a key lower than the guitar usually goes oh really right right there it's usually here but it's but that's uncomfortable for a regular guitar player <laughs> so wait so it was in b or something it was re- it was originally an e flat minor right what? there but i turned it to that f is... minor e flat minor is so weird yeah it is pretty it's weird a key very, very uncomfortable key yeah it was but it, but it sounded good on the original version, so it was fine. Uh, but for my for my version, I had to I had to tune it up to E uh, to sorry to F uh, minor, um, so I could actually play it on the guitar, and it was perfect. And I I did a just a little vocal choral arrangement, and just decided to put that in there. It's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So. I, I do appreciate the time and effort that you put into it because, well, like I said, it, it's not easy doing a song and especially doing a video for a song with that production value. Mm, not easy. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I, I do notice here that you, you mentioned also before that you do a lot of collabs. So how did you got started on that? Like, um, I noticed your first collab was with... Give me a second. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, with... Um, uh, re- uh, re- uh, I I can't see this. Uh, try it, try relative pitch. Yeah, relative pitch. Try harder, Norman. <laughs> That's a, use those okay. words. Um, Mom taught you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, that was that was fun too. Um, I actually met relative pitch at the uh, convention uh, in Everfree Northwest. Mm. Um, this was last year. Yeah, this was last year. Um, and we, uh, we, I just, I was sitting outside. Well, no, actually, I was sitting in a little uh, music room that I that they had, and I was playing the piano. And he was playing along, and we were. I played like Claire de Lune and stuff like that. And it, it was it, his violin skills were outstanding. Oh. And then we went outside. We went outside, and I sat in a little grass field, and I kind of had we we kind of had our own little concert. Mm. Uh, like twenty people gathered around and started listening. I guess they thought that I was pretty good. So, so uh, yeah, that's where I actually met him. And he found me on YouTube because I told him my YouTube name. He found me on YouTube after that um, and asked. He, he said, if you ever need a violin part for any of your songs, I can totally help you out. And I said, you know what? I will definitely take you up on that after, offer. And then I recorded Emerald Eyes. And our first song, it was our first song, and it turned out pretty awesome for the for a uh, – it was like – the reason that it sounded good was because I didn't use any – like, I mean, I had just beca- – I had just got um, a, a MIDI uh, drum kit, so all the drums aren't mashed together and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was our – that was my that was my first big song. Um, got a – it was my second spotlight on EQD, but uh, – because Laughter had got one as well, but uh, – but um, uh, Emerald Eyes was my first big song, and the other. So he was the collabing. Collabing with him was actually pretty uh, quick and simple. 
I all I did was I recorded a, a little demo violin that I have on my keyboard. It's mm-hmm. pretty awful and really <laughs> hard on the ears. I said, "Here, can you record this?" And I was pretty sure it was the same day that he got back to me with hit with a recorded violin of uh, the part that I sent him. And so I just put it in the song, edited it, and posted it just just like that. And it was it turned out awesome. It was just really, really. Uh, it was, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so from that point on, you got more people on. Like, um, I'm, I'm looking at one here that you got with Feathers uh, and Relative Pitch again, and also uh, with Angela uh, Angel uh, Angel, Angel Heart. Heart. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Final verse. Uh, the famous. Eli Monty. Monty, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, wow. She only um, had she only had a small part in that song, actually. The only thing that she did, and it's of course it's it's uh, um, uh, still, uh, what do you call it? Remarkable. Mm. Uh, she did a j- good job. She just did the Granny Smith voice at the beginning of, <laughs> of of Winterfall. That was the only thing that she did. I was like, you know, this really needs that voice in there. Can you help me out? She said, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, and, she, she, and so on. Like, um, you got yourself out there. And the, um, looking at your career on the YouTubes is what, like um, one year and a half or so on, something like that? Uh, yeah, it's about, it's just about been a year, a year about, mm-hmm. uh, over, about a year and a quarter. I started on April 7th mm. of 2013. So, yeah. Yeah, and... Look where you are, man. Like, you got most of the big names, like Ellie Monty and Chi Chi and Feathers. And Feathers is also awesome gal. She is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the other notable uh, musicians, she's a musician, that I, collab, uh, that I collabed with a couple times was Giggly Maria. Hmm. Um, she actually has an awesome voice. We're about to, we're about to put out a song that, uh, that nobody, well, some people have heard just my version of singing it. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, so it, it and it's uh, it's part of a concept album as well uh, that I'm doing, and she did a really awesome job. If 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 you want to know, the song is called "Still on the Moon," um, oh. and you can find it on my album uh, called "Small Horses and Other Stuff." Mm-hmm. But it's just my voice uh, in that version, and so we're going to be coming out with a version uh, where she's singing it, and I personally think that hers is better. Her version is way better, but right. our. Yeah, but our most notable song that we did was uh, Flutter. She only had a small part, but it added just the right kind of uh, uh, feminine side to it, I guess. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. And she did some harmonies, and she had one small lead part in there as well. Mm, okay. And um, I, I, have just, I just have to fanboy for a while. And um, your song, Here on the Moon... The- I enjoyed that song a lot. The intro was really good. The Thank you. The intro. Mm, nice. <laughs> Thank you. That was, uh, that was fun too. It was in the works for about three months or so. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, not three months. Maybe, oh, uh, <laughs> six months. Sorry, oh. I'd, I had started it back in October about... You know, I kind, I kind of have to ask now because... This actually lends uh, to what I was going to ask next, but um, six months. What's actually the process uh, when you come up with the song? You know, how do you get it from start to end? Usually, what's what's your uh, mean? You know, you, well, the process actually just uh, yeah. Okay, sure. So the um, <clears throat> well, the main thing that usually keeps musicians from posting their stuff is just this one little thing that stops them like they're waiting on someone else or they can't get this one part right or they're or they're not motivated enough to do something so but the song process for me usually is just kind of i have an idea i try to find a tune for it and i if i do then i record the tune and then i finish the lyrics after uh recording the tune because you start with the tune I, t- I start with the idea first because and you want to get the two. Yeah, you, you you want to get the at least the idea for the lyrics first. Oh, yeah, you got to get the tone and the mood right. Yes, exactly. So if you don't, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you got to know what kind of song you want to record at least. So you have to have some sort of, uh, I don't know, phrase or something 
and that sets the tone. So, um, so that's what I usually do. I usually just have an idea. I record the tune, and then I record the, and then I uh, write the lyrics. And if somebody else is singing it, I offer them to. I offer them if if they would like to sing it. Um, if so, then I just wait on them, and I record a, a demo vocal for them to, um, um, for them to follow along with, as well as just an instrumental, so they can sing it on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, um, but. I usually, if you want to know my song recording process, it's I usually start with the rhythm instrument, which is usually the drums or the acoustic guitar. I don't usually start with anything else, um, unless an electric guitar is keeping the rhythm. Um, so, like, uh, um, for uh, let's see, one that was recorded pretty uh, pretty quickly was "Chasing Fate." Um, I rec- even uh, even compared to how long it is, it was p- recorded pretty shortly. Um, I started with the acoustic guitars for that one because they set they not only set the rhythm, but they also um, they also uh, provided the uh, the tune the the uh, the tune structure the song structure. Yeah, of course. You know how the whole thing was going to go. Um, so I, mean, it's, I did it's, that. It's a basic backing track, right? So yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Just you, you kind of need that in the first place. Yeah. The the interesting thing about the guitars for that song was I actually I actually played one guitar with a one acoustic guitar with a pick, and I and I uh, used my fingers for the other one. So it was kind of like you know that's a pick, and then the fingers are oh, oh we got some yeah. live music here in the studio, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> still, still performing oh, for yeah. you live, forever free, Brony, <laughs> formerly known as the Space Needle. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! Anyways, so yeah, the song recording process. I usually record the acoustic guitars, then I go to the drums, and then the bass, then whatever uh, instruments uh, maybe put on top of that that fit in the genre. Mm. So for that kind of a genre, it usually includes piano. And maybe a little bit of clean electric guitar um, to add a southern style to it, you know, like a twang, mm. you know, kind of that kind of a thing. Um, so that's, and then I uh, actually added a little something in there that uh, not all of my songs have. I added a bit of ukulele in it, uh, just for like a. It was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a mandolin, but I didn't have a mandolin at the time. Improvise. Um, yeah, so I used a ukulele, ukulele works, right? and then I asked uh, Relative Pitch uh, uh, if he'd like to play on this song. It was supposed to be a really epic kind of southern song, and you know, kind of like a smaller version of Green Grass and High Tides, just with no, without electric guitars so much. Mm. Uh, by by the Outlaws, if you haven't heard of them, um, so it so it had the big solo in the middle. And um, it was a violin solo, and I I just did the same thing I did with Emerald Eyes. I recorded a demo violin. Man, that thing sounds awful. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it, but I have to use it every time. Anyways, um, so, and I asked him if he could get it uh, done by October so I could submit it. Well, you don't have to submit it. So I, I asked him if he could get it done by October so I could, um, so it could be counted in the top 10 for, of October. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, and it did, and it did make it in there. It got number ten in the top ten. So that was cool. So that's basically my song process. Um, the drums are the drums I use though are uh, that's a little more. Uh, that's the topic that's a little more detailed. I kind of, uh, I I'm a finger drummer basically. I use a keyboard uh, and I assign certain drums to be on certain keys. So I can play it like a drum set on the keyboard. Mm. So I, yeah, um, I know a you lot of people. That you just got this uh, MIDI. Well, drum. I didn't just recently get it, but I had just got it during the time of recording uh, Giggles and Gumdrops or Emerald Eyes. Right. So that was a couple. That was a while back. Yeah, that was that was that was quite a while back. Back in July of 2013. So, um, 
Uh, yeah, I was just getting used to that as well as like mixing and mastering and stuff. Uh, so, um, that, uh, it kind of just provides, you can assign, uh, certain drums to be on certain sides of the headphones. Like you want this, you usually want the symbol or the hi hat, closed hi hat to be in your right ear and snare and bass, uh, drums to be in the middle and stuff like that. So I was just getting used to uh, the process of all that, um, and uh, I had learned to use the brush drum uh, kit for, uh, well, mostly brush drums for mm-hmm. uh, uh, chasing fate. Um, so that was uh, that. That was an experience too. But it can't. I could go into a ton of detail about the drums in in Ableton. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I use Ableton Live Nine as my recording. Uh, 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 program. Mm, oh, okay, so you use that like um, I I don't want to go really technical here because um, most of this stuff is going to go over our heads, especially me because yeah, I don't know how to hold a C chord on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> so you use Ableton, and what other programs do you use? Um, so I have what I use to uh. Get basically get the chords through to the computer. I have an interface uh, uh, called a uh, UX2, and it's mm-hmm. an analog to digital uh, um, so interface. It's, 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 just, oh, it's not that cool thing which uh, turns your jack into a USB. Yeah, basically. Yeah, oh, that's right. what it does. So it's yeah. basically like an audio box. I guess, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was I was looking at it because there's this uh, <clears throat> there's this game which is where I learn everything about the world. Um, <laughs> uh, I forgot the name, but it's it's like a uh, you know you know how you have like Guitar Hero and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think it's called Rocksmith. Really realistic. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. Something smart, Rocksmith. Uh, yeah, Rocksmith. yeah. Rocksmith. Oh my gosh! Is is that the cable that you're talking about? That, that it's sort of like that. Cable? It's sort of like that. That's more of a yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like that, because that turns it into code basically. Mm. So, it turns your sound into whatever the USB stick produces. Mm, so okay. or whatnot. I'm so yeah, well, I got, I got a question for you because I I tried to uh, do that right. Uh, I, yeah. I tried to do some covers, and I was using my uh, Guitar Hero controller, and it <laughs> couldn't play. It. Uh, Wait, are you talking Rocksmith or Guitar Hero? Because two different games. Yeah, Guitar Hero, you know, the the, the five buttons. And I plugged that into my computer <laughs> and I tried to play. Oh, uh, you tried to play songs. the game? Uh, no, just, you know, cover actual songs. And it didn't really work. You and I just want to ask the Guitar why. Hero controller? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, it's, not, just, it's not assigned to make specific just, chords. Does that not work? No! Wow, is, is the Guitar Hero controller not an actual guitar? I'm, I'm, it, I'm just no, no, it's, it's not. not. It's not. It's not an oh, actual I... guitar. No, the Guitar Hero so controller that's why it doesn't just have has any five strings. <laughs> yeah, correct. Uh, there I are. Was, there I was are. Wondering. Hold on. There are some uh, recent uh, additions to the Guitar Hero controller collection. Uh, like the Rock Band 3 uh, Pro Mode guitar is actually, it's a full, it has a full neck and has like, what, 180 buttons or however many frets wow. are on a real guitar. Really? You can, really? so it's, so yeah, yeah, and it has strings that you can strum on and whatnot. But it, so it works like a real guitar. It's like playing Rocksmith on Rock Band, basically. <laughs> oh, okay. okay Follow up so, question. If I buy yeah. that, will that instantly make me able to play Free Bird? No. <laughs> No. No. Really? No, because you actually have to learn it first. Mm-hmm. You, so that's you, false advertising because on the back of the box they say, you know, play like the professionals. <laughs> you have to learn it first. Yeah. I mean, you have to, it does teach you. It does teach you. I have a high score in, <laughs> in Guitar Hero it for does. Aerosmith. Mm. Or, or, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's all good. Uh, no, you, it, it does teach you how to play guitar. It does not say it does not play it for you and it does not make you an amazing guitarist but uh, it does help you mm-hmm. um uh, so yeah. it, it'll show you like um the way that it does it is a little bit different you have six 
usually you have five strings, you have five frets or buttons to press on the um, on the Guitar Hero controller. This one you have basically six rows uh, on the on the screen. You have six rows sliding towards you, and each row represents a string that you strum, and it'll have a number on it. And you go to that number fret on the guitar. Um, uh, so I mean, the numbers will be like the the notes sliding towards you, basically mm. on the on the regular Guitar Hero. But mm. this is Rock Band Pro mode, so oh, okay. you have no you have numbers sliding towards you, and you go to the whatever number fret that is. So you say like you have a uh, a zero, you just strum it open. You have a zero on the two string or. On the yeah, you have a zero on the A string. You you just strum it open. You have a two on the A string. That's there, and you have a three on the A string. You, if those are really close, then you go you know whatever. So that's it. Does teach you how to play real guitar, but it does. It may take a while. So, so was was this how you learned? No, no. This <laughs> so is how, not how, how I learned. So how did you learn? Because you you actually know like uh, fifty thousand different kinds of instruments, and I th- I think that's pretty impressive. And uh, you know, I gotta ask, how did you learn? Did you go through? I mean, you you said you uh, you already mentioned that you learned piano or a uh, keyboard, right? Yeah. But what about yeah. the other guitars? Are you self taught, or did you take lessons? You know, how did you get so good? Well, I'll I'll start where I started. I I mean, uh, it's I'm gonna refer back to the piano first. I took piano starting at like age 10 or 11. I don't remember, but I've been playing the piano for a long time. And piano is the most relatable instrument. So ha- having the piano knowledge in my head already, I, le- I taught myself how to play the guitar. And it was very relatable because I could say, oh, that's what this looks like on the piano. And, mm. you know, the A string is uh, the A note. And I don't refer to them as numbered strings. Mm-hmm. I refer to them as lettered strings and because piano is... Also, num- not really numbered unless you play the piano in Spanish. I guess mm-hmm. they do it in numbers. Uh, well, we'll, but, we'll um, have to ask James Cork. True. <laughs> sure. Sure. But the piano keys are, are labeled with letters instead of numbers. I, I so, thought they were labeled with colors because like, uh, they like, can be if you're white like and black. If you're like two. Oh, right. Well, they are. But I mean, and you the refer to. They're, they're not really bigger. labeled. They're not really labeled. They're just kind of people call them that. To uh, to to have a name for the key, like if all, all white notes are A through G, or mm-hmm. so, but the black notes, uh, even some white notes can be like flats or sharps. Uh, so yeah. So anyways, I started with the piano and I and I um, related it to the guitar very easily. Um, um, I mean, not too easily. It did take a while. Like. So one of the first songs that I tried to play um, was uh, like "Hit Me with Your Best Shot." The oh, thing that good... wanted... yeah, that, the... that was the first song that I played on uh, on Guitar Hero as well. <laughs> that's amazing. You, 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 and I we're we're brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, now the thing that motivated me to play the guitar though was actually Guitar Hero Two. Oh, oh, really? In number two. The yeah, the second well, second two, game. Two was, second two was a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it was it was decent. I mean, I'm an I'm an Xbox fan, and, and oh, so oh. yeah, you, you I, just, I never really played the original. I never really played the original, but I did play two, and I've played like all of them since they're on, except for Smash Hits and Eighty. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, um, so after taking after taking an interest in the guitar, I just kind of taught it to myself and learned how to tune it and stuff. And I actually started with. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't start with an acoustic. I started with uh, an electric that oh. had a really high action. It's just the action is kind of what raises the strings, kind of what, how high the strings are from the fret. It was kind of like playing an acoustic guitar, only that it needed to be plugged into an amp. Sort oh, of. okay. So it was so... Uh, you, were, you were playing an electric guitar just now, right? No, this is an acoustic. No, that, not that one. The, uh, the one with the uh, twang. The twang. No, twang. one with the twang is like yeah. this. I mean, no, I I went like this. I made it sound sort of like it had one. So oh, it's sorry. Like this. Well, how did you? Do, how did you? Do, oh, did you I strummed closer, closer to the bridge. bridge. I strummed closer to the bridge. Yep. That's all. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, no. Um, so ever since like, I, I, I got a few. I've yeah. Ever since Guitar Hero, I've learned, I wanted to learn how to play guitar, and I just taught myself. 
and learned a bunch of Guitar Hero songs because I thought they were cool and thought that they would be impressive. They are. And so, like, they are impressive. yeah, uh, like, they can be. Some of those songs are way over. Some of the songs in Guitar Hero are not even, like, close to how you would regularly play it. I mean, none of them are even close, but they make the chords uh, ridiculously easy. huge. No, they make the rec- the chords on yeah, Guitar Hero. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually sleep. sure that a lot of chords require more than two button presses. <laughs> to- true, true that, true that. I mean, like, there's these chords on the on the game sometimes, like in Through the Fire and Flames. You have to press the, the green, the okay, yellow. Okay, can we not mention that song? <laughs> just... <laughs> Sorry, sorry, that song sorry. It hurts. All right, it just hurts. <laughs> it does. It does hurt. I'm sorry. Sorry, but anyways, you have to. There are some it's songs the where you have to press the green, the yellow, and the orange, and mm-hmm. it's ridiculously huge. Mm-hmm. And that chord actually looks like it sounds like this here on the guitar. It's just a bar chord. <laughs> oh, you can play it's in real just, life. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I, I can't what, play that. What song. chord is that for the? Uh, That's for a. The it's a C minor. A C minor. Um, Seven C minor seven C minor seven. Yeah, I, I didn't know if it was in seven. Yeah, they. Anyways, so yeah, ever since so ever since Guitar Hero, basically, and uh, I learned to play the drums because I could. Ever since before I could play the piano, I've always been able to beatbox. Ooh. So, uh, so learning the drums is pretty easy, and the bass was just a bigger guitar with bigger strings and less. I mean, and less strings, uh, and more. On just longer frets, and so that was pretty four easy to learn. Strings, except for the what? Four strings, what was, right? Okay. Yeah, four strings on a regular sized bass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they're just much thicker, and so they have a deeper noise, and mm. they go really low depending on how you tune them. But I mean, some string, some basses have six strings or five strings. I know a couple. I know a guy who has a six string bass, and it's tuned differently. It actually than it. It's not the same as a twelve string guitar. <laughs> it has a one it has one lower string than the lowest string, and one higher string than the highest string. Hmm. The, oh, so bass. it's not just uh, octaves above. Yeah, exactly. With, uh, like in a twelve string. Yeah. Yes. All right. Precisely. Um, so yeah, yours, at, you you play a regular uh, four string, right? Yourself. Yeah. 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 I sometimes tune it down to the key of uh, D, though, so I can have a lower tone. But um, so an interesting story on how I learned the mandolin. Oh, um, it has the tuning of a uh, violin, so it's similar to that. So I know now. I now know the basics of a violin. <laughs> Actually, in October, uh, we had a uh, a church uh, play. Um, we did uh, Fiddler on the Roof, um, and I was part of the orchestra for it. And they didn't have a mandolin player. I mean, they did, but. The mandolin player was needed as a violinist, okay. and so he so he took the job as a violin uh, player for that. And they asked me if I could learn the mandolin. I said, uh, probably. I mean, I know some of the vi- I know some violin. I mean, I I'm terrible at violin. I cannot play it. I cannot play it. But I know some. I know the music theory of for the violin, mm-hmm. just not the techniques. Uh, so I knew how it worked. And how the tuning was and whatnot, but um, I had never actually played a mandolin before, and so I gave it a shot. Um, and by the time that we were ready for the concert, by, by the time we were ready for the play, um, I had learned the mandolin uh, up and down. <laughs> so uh, it kind of just came to me in a flash, basically. So basically, from your uh, guitar lessons, your piano lessons, and even the field attempt at your violin lesson, it all to, uh, it all play a part in learning the mandolin? I guess so, yeah. It, How yeah. similar to the guitar is the mandolin? Like, uh, okay, so the, mandolin, the mandolin's tuning is like this. It's a G, and then it has a D, then an A, and then a, a D. A, I mean, sorry, E. G, G, D, A, E. That's it's it's like that. A. Yeah. That spells. Anyways. <laughs> oh, you! You're such a child. Anyways, so it basically, sounds like that. Um, I don't have it with me, right? Uh, actually, I do, but it's in a case. It looks like. That's cool. It's cool. Uh, so, it's it's a little interesting. The the fingering and stuff is a little different. 
you have to go there's just certain musical aspects of it that are just very different and it only ha- it has eight strings but it's kind of like a 12 string guitar where two of each string uh, how do i say this two uh, strings are two tuned strings to, are the, to the same, same note key. but just uh, yeah. one octave apart mm. no not even an octave apart tuned the exact same oh, oh really yeah the exact same pitch oh huh, yeah okay mm-hmm, okay uh so it, all, why, all why, the notes why like that? sound like this they all sound like that basically is it just for the uh, ringing noise, or does it impart yeah. a specific quality to the mandolin? It, it's it's what makes the mandolin's tone. If you didn't have both those strings on each note, then it wouldn't sound like a mandolin. It just sound like a guitar with a different tuning. Mm. So oh, okay, yeah. <coughs> well, we're really that getting technical. Here. <laughs> yeah, we're learning so much about music. Yay, <laughs> learning together. <laughs> so anyways yeah so that's that the ukulele and the banjo as well I, uh, banjo is similar to a mandolin I guess I uh, do love the sound of the banjo it's really cool that, it's very fun I put it that reminds one. me of deliverance and that gives me nightmares <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, I think we're missing a big part of your music which is the cover art so um, oh, yeah. You said you draw cover art. So, do you do most of the cover arts, or do you no. have people who draw for you? Uh, I usually get artists to uh, uh, to draw for me. I I can be like cartoonist, but I can't draw that fast. I <laughs> use free. I never really used any methods or anything. I just kind of draw freehand. Um, so, which one I, did you draw? Like I did uh, the one that I did draw. The one that I did draw on there is uh, the cover art for Wandering Eyes. Um, oh, okay. You can, yeah, you can look at that one. It's just black and white, and it's got some a bit of shading effects in it. But it's just it's the uh, <laughs> traditional media one. Yeah, mm. basically. Just, that, that's not even that's not even on a computer or anything. That's actually I took a picture. Yeah, you of can it you can tell it's uh, paper. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice and organic. You know? It looks awesome. <laughs> looks awesome. Yeah, thank you. So, I like your stuff. So. Uh, I'm looking at the cover for uh, the uh, Open Your Eyes with Cup song, right? Did you draw that? Uh, The cover art for... Oh, on Bandcamp? Open Your Eyes, the Cup song. Yeah. There really isn't any cover art for that one. Did you draw that? The... You mean... Oh, you mean the one for... That's on Bandcamp? No. The one that's on... The one on your YouTube with the six... With the six... uh, Oh no! Picture that's just yourself? a picture. It's... No, that's just a picture. You didn't draw that? <laughs> no, I didn't draw that. Wow. I'm just no way. No just... way. Wow! It's no. a frame from the video. <laughs> um, so, Guni, if I remember right, um, during one of the Kalisti live stream, you or someone mentioned that they did a fan. Uh, no, not really fan art, but they did cover art for you, right? And was that Antikola Pony? Uh, yeah. He yeah he drew uh, the artwork for House of Glass. Ah, oh, that looks awesome. Yeah, he did an awesome job. See, it's very stylish. He, yeah, it was pretty. He said it was pretty simple because it only had one face in it. Because mm-hmm. um, like uh, characters are like the most complex to draw out of all things in drawing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, that's what he said at least. But. Uh, the thing that got him to notice me was the fact that I had drawn uh, Wandering Eyes myself. Mm-hmm. He was like, do you need an artist? I was like, yeah, actually I do. My <laughs> artist kind of left for a while. She's not going to be back oh. for two years. So so um, besides Antikola Pony, I, I do notice your new cover art for uh, Ben. That looks awesome. Who did that one? Uh, the cover art was done by well, it's actually the artist that I that left a while ago. Oh. Uh, that Anticular Pony kind of replaced oh. uh, because um, see, she was uh, that's Dragon Wolf Rook, by the way. You can mm-hmm. find her DV and dart pretty well, pretty pretty easy. Anyways, uh, yeah, she's really talented, and she's she does she not only does uh, cover art. We kind of had a commission going. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I I paid her to do art, so and it was really she did it really quickly. Everything was just <laughs> done in like a week, or I mean maybe maybe less than a less than a day. Oh. Like the like the art for Flutter was actually done in like six hours. Wow, 
<laughs> it, was, it was pretty fast. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty fast. Um, anyways, um, so yeah, she did the cover art for Bend as well as Chant of Mirth, um, and she had had them done for quite a while. She was like, you know, uh, I noticed that you're probably going to be doing more chants, and I said, yes, I am. So she got started on the Chant of Mirth, and she did uh, the one for the next chant as well. I'm not going to tell what that is yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the but she also said that she really liked Bend, and if I ever did a uh, a, a revamp for Bend, mm-hmm. then she do it for free. <laughs> yeah, she just she just said, "Here, here you go. I'll do it. I love the song." So yeah, I got I got two free pieces of art. It was. I mean, it was. It has two different versions of the of the art because um, there's one where it's just him and he's about to snap his fingers. It's just Discord and he's about to snap his fingers. And then if you listen later on in the song, if you look at the art, you see his, his fingers are snapped, <laughs> and it and his um and then there's a lightning strike coming down and it's all darker and that's the more epic part of the song, I guess. All right. All right. So, so it, was, it was her idea, and I was like, you know, this is a great idea. Let's do it. Still, that that is awesome. That is awesome. I'm I'm looking right now at the cover art, and it looks menacing, and it makes me want to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. That that was fun. Too. So, yeah. Okay, so I guess uh, before we wrap up, there's one final question that I do want to get into, and uh, you being an artist, you know, we've talked about the numbers, we've talked about fan response. But as an artist, there's always the one song or the one thing that you put out which means a lot to you personally for you know many different reasons. It's it's not always usually the one that does the best, you know. It's not always the one that does the worst. But uh, out of all the songs that you've put out, which is your personal favorite, the one that means the most to you as an artist? And maybe you could go a, a little bit into why. Well, uh, so the most, my favorite song that I've put out is called Thought I'd Let You Know. Um, and a lot of people uh, know that song. It has about maybe almost 30,000 views now, which is pretty, it's, it, it, it's a big number for me. But um, like, it's, it's my fourth most popular currently. It's uh, the story behind it was that uh, I. Was re- I had a really hard time in my life about getting back to people, mm-hmm. about like uh, you know responding and stuff like that. And I learned that it really it really does hurt people, and it and it can be uh, very confusing and just stress involving um, to to not communicate very well. Um, so I wrote a song about uh, about me. I. When I watch the show, I notice that Twilight usually relies on uh, Celestia for comfort in knowing that she'll usually respond to her with a letter of her own when she reports her friendship uh, lessons. So I wrote a song about what it would be like if Celestia never um, responded back to Twilight. And so the song, it does have a special place in, in uh, in my heart because... It's part of my life, basically, mm-hmm. and, and I find that I find that I, uh, out of all the all of my music, I go back and listen to that one a lot to remind myself to keep responding to people. Um, so, yeah, and relative pitch helped me out with that one as well. It's very oh, it, has a great, it has a great intro with the uh, um, you know with the <laughs> coming in. Yeah. It's, it's very. You know, it's the, probably the most. Probably the most depressing t- tune I've ever written, but it's still. It's it. You know, yeah. on the other hand, it's kind of sweet. I heard this song. It's uh, it's it's also has you know a, a little bit of sweet undertones to it. I mean, yeah. it's it is a it is a sad song, but you know, in the end, a lot of the things that we do um, that mean the most to us always come from the heart, and you know, this one this one seems to uh, echo something that really you feel strongly about so you know it's a good piece of music yeah, mm-hmm. yeah thank you the, and it's, the one, yeah. one of the yeah one of the notable things about it though is actually it had a uh, fame fiction written for it written Ooh. about based off of it um <laughs> and cool. it and the and not only that but that fame fiction actually got a lot of attention like <laughs> you know, maybe 400 you know or so I think, likes i think i saw that one yeah i think i, I think i saw that one yeah, it was just the same name as the song called Thought I'd Let You Know. 
Yeah, I def- yeah, I did see it. Wow, that that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you yeah, know, things it's... cross things cross platforms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I do I do like the message that you're trying to send out where um try and respond to other people because you might not know how they feel because they might be expecting something from you back but if you don't respond they get worried they get sad they get depressed and so on and i i do like what you're trying to um say or trying to express in your music <laughs> i do my best i'm trying I've, I've been improving on responding to people and getting back to people right away Mm, that's so that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. And um, a, res- a response is better than none. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Even so, if it's late, but still, oh, yeah. right yeah. away is best. True. Right away. But if you're late, you can just say sorry for the red reply and move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like move on yeah. with the message. Like sorry for the red reply, but here's what I have to say. Uh, yeah. That's what I do most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Norman. Uh, you <laughs> you know, try sorry. to message me more than once, like every month, maybe. <laughs> Try and not going, or like easy when you visit, your... like when you visit, don't tell me like like two two hours before you actually visit. Hey, I'm coming over, and I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But but anywho, um, mo- moving See, on. Every, um, I, I think we can all learn a lesson from this song. It's it's important. meaningful. Yeah, it's meaningful. Mm, but but you know, like I said, all good messages always just come from the heart. Mm-hmm. So everybody, go check out uh, this song. On the channel, and what channel can we find you at? Just Forever Free Brony. Oh. And that's uh, four. four with the yeah with the number instead of uh, yeah. because it's leaped. <laughs> yeah, no. and it's all one word, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's not really divided into two names. Just Forever Free Brony. Just Links type that up, and you'll find me. All right, you'll yeah. find me. I am pretty well known, so I'll yeah. just oh, put yeah. it in the show notes. <laughs> so, um, uh, Guni, I-, I do notice that you also had platforms for people to buy your songs on Bandcamp, Google Plus. Wait, no, Google Plus is the um, social network. No, So you got um, Google Play and Bandcamp. iTunes. So um, how has that been responding to, well, for the people who are interested? Has that gone it's, positively? Yeah, it's gone pretty positively. My biggest album so far has been Small Horses and Other Stuff. Uh, the main thing about that one is that it's, mo- it's not only relatable to... Um, Bronies, but it's really, uh, because of my uh, lyrical choice. Mm-hmm. I actually, it's relatable to anyone who isn't a Brony. If you don't, if you don't know it's a Brony song, then you have no idea that it is. Mm. So uh, I also was able to put it out under my real name, Garrison Ulrich, oh. on Bandcamp and iTunes and Amazon and stuff like that. So oh, and Xbox Music. Oh, Xbox has music now. <laughs> Yeah, it's sorry. Nice. It was, it's like replacing the Zune marketplace. Okay, sorry because um, technically here in Malaysia we don't have the Xbox support. So, yeah, I I want to buy an Xbox, but if they don't support it, I can't buy it because if it get rigged, ring, where do I send it? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's you don't you don't have to have an Xbox to have Xbox Music. Just it's just basically what happened to the Zune marketplace. Oh. Microsoft's it's like Microsoft's version of the iPod and I do prefer the Zune better. Oh, oh okay. No comment yeah. there because I personally have an iPhone but I am not gonna bitch about it. It's all it. good, it's all good. I'm not really biased, just kind of what raised differently. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh one does not mean the other's better. All right. And this right. is not a um a platform on where we debate about which phone is better because all phones are the same. Once it broke, you go buy a new one. <laughs> Stick yourself, man. Android forever. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I got a Windows. I got a Windows phone. Hey, oh, we got the trifactor here. That's good. That's good. I, I do like that. I do like that because if I want to see your Windows phone, hey, let me see it, and then oh, this is interesting, and so on. I, I like the um, versatility. You know what of... they call it? Windows phone. What? That's what I throw it out of. When <laughs> uh, you're just being mean. But anyway. Wow. <laughs> but anyhow, anyways, uh, no Windows phones are cool. Windows phones mm, are cool. You just need to get used to it. But anywho, um, yeah. thank thank you, Guni, for being on and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, it was fun talking to you. It was it was great fun. It was very informative, and you know, looking into the process of an artist is something that uh, people rarely get a chance to uh, be you know privy to. So thanks for sharing. Uh, really. Thanks for yeah, no problem. collaborating and talking about your life, your influences. 
and your process. It was mm. it was a uh, it was great. And how can they find you? Like um, the listeners to this episode right now, how can they find you? You can just search my name on YouTube. My YouTube name is just for for Everfree Brony. It's a number four, Everfree Brony, and I, I'll probably be the first result that comes up. That's what I did. <laughs> And also on the Twitters, if you have the Twitters. I, I do have a Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter if you want. I don't use it that much, just mainly to post new songs. Mm. But, oh, okay. yeah. By the same name too, for Ever Free Brony? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll just link everything in the show notes. <laughs> Ain't that fun, guys? The, the girl was pretty awesome, right? And doobly <laughs> Sure was. Now, yeah, it was. Uh, okay, I think I'm in the wrong page of the script. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> James, how many times I, I told you not to drink soda near the oak? Okay, anywho, <laughs> um, n- n- let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> next topic is shout outs. And my shout out goes to you, Goonie. Thanks for being on. Thanks for being an awesome guest. And just thanks for being an all around awesome guy. Well, thank you for having me. I actually had a lot of fun. Yeah, glad to know because we strive on having fun, <laughs> even though it's if it's degrading to my sanity <laughs> <laughs> and to you James thank you for hosting me on the stream and for being an awesome co-host that's fine dude no problem and Rom thank you for coming on and being the newscaster my pleasure and thank you Connor just for staying in your corner and keeping it warm <laughs> My pleasure. Honor to be here. And honestly speaking, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you. You've been a fun addition to the show. I'll be here if you need me. Will do. Don't worry. We don't need you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And thank you, Kitsu, for being on and helping me out. You're paying me, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm paying you in food. So mm, when, we, when we meet that's, up. That's, that's the best. I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. <laughs> All righty then. James, well, what about you? What about what? What do you mean? What about me? My yes. shoutouts? Okay. Well, first shoutout goes to my uh, to my lovely friends here: Norman, Corner, Romu. You guys are awesome. Second one goes to the people on my stream that are watching right now because they're super faithful. Mm-hmm. They don't leave me despite live stream trying to screw me over with some bull crap or whatever. <laughs> so we're streaming on Picardo right now. I'll go. I'll go back to live stream. Um, by the time you're listening to this, I will be going back to live stream. But right now, I'm on Picardo. Mm-hmm. Doing fairly well. I um, want to give a shout out to Fernin, uh, who's a very good friend of mine, commissioned me this massive comic, and we're already working on the fourth uh, issue. It's going to be fun, it's going to be awesome, and he is a really generous guy, um, great person, and I don't think I have any more shout outs to give this week. Mm, yeah, cool. that will be it. And Rom, what about you? Shout out to all the people in the chat, in the stream, and in the show. Thank you for being here and letting me be here and tolerating my nuisance. <laughs> no, man. You've been awesome to hang it's out. It's okay. It's okay. E- earplugs do a lot of things to you when, in order to avoid listening to your annoyance. It's fine. <laughs> and, uh, Corner, what about you? Well, I'd like to give my shout outs to everyone in the stream. Thanks for being here and listening to us and everyone listening to this podcast whenever you're actually doing it. Thanks for supporting everyone here and keep buying our merchandise. Yay! Buy all our place sets. Buy all, all, buy all our place sets and whatever. <laughs> Wait, we have... Beg your nuts? parents, beg your mother, beg your dad. <laughs> no, we don't. You will not be complete until you get these play sets. Yeah. You need these play sets. Your friends will mock at you if you don't get these play sets. And if you get them... Then they will mock at you anyways because you need to get more play sets. Play sets. Uh, I need to get that thing worker, man. <laughs> play sets. Yeah. Only nine ninety five on your local Walmart. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Kitsu, shout out. Yeah, I want to shout out to mandolin players all over the world. <laughs> From what I learned today, if you hit a mandolin with a bow, it sounds like a violin. <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll Go buy that for a dollar. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, you, Guni? Shout out. I'd like to shout out to all the, uh, just all all my subscribers and all the people that I've collabed with because they're just a lot of fun, and getting to see all the feedback is really awesome. And a shout out to you guys because oh. this is this is also a lot of fun. Oh, uh, thank you. Can man. you tell? Can you tell that I like things that are fun? 
<laughs> fun things are fun. <laughs> so if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow.com. And if you would like to email us personally, links will be available in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. Sweetiebot will post pictures about whatever she's doing. Um, recently, she posted pictures of food because I told her she needs to be more outgoing. I don't know why she's taking my shtick. It's a robot. She cannot eat food. I what know. Is it? She's stealing my shtick. And as for me, um, you can reach me. Norman, what is wrong? What kind of people do you hang out with? I don't know. Where did Sweetiebot touch you? <laughs> Show us the doll where the bot touched you. Show us in the pony toy where the pony touched you. And with what? <laughs> and how? And how many and times? How? And how many times? Yes, yes. This is so important. This has nothing to do with the club fix series that I'm writing. I'm not doing research or anything. And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. Uh, I post pictures about... <laughs> Whatever. Like, uh, you please take this measuring tape. Tell me how long it was. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything. What about you, James? Do you really want me to keep talking? <laughs> uh, we can reach you, man. Okay, it's up to you, man. You are the one editing. Uh, you can find me on uh, under your bed, um, inside your closet. <laughs> Uh, in the attic, <laughs> watching that you will sleep. Uh, okay, no, anyway. You can find me on, uh, at James Cork on Twitter, uh, on jamescork.dbnr.com and make sure that you visit my Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome, will do, man, will do. Uh, <laughs> wrong? For a moment I was, Sorry? for a moment I was actually afraid that I would find you in my closet since there's already one guy in there. <laughs> Who tells you I'm not recording with him? <laughs> The fact that he's maybe on the road. Maybe, maybe, maybe I kill him and I am wearing his skin now. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> dark. <laughs> this, this has gotten re- interesting. Rom, this is going off rail. Hey, Rom, what about you? People can find me at twitter.com slash romywaldz69 or at my Tumblr, rowishes.tumblr.com or at my OC's Tumblr, askjitterylines.tumblr.com. Awesome. And Connor, where can they find you? If they really want to, which is doubtful, no one wants to find me, I do have a Tumblr. It's asklevelup.com. Awesome. Dot Tumblr. Awesome, awesome. Dot Tumblr.com, all right. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been... That's not a word! Sorry, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) I have been James Cork. I am Romy Wald. I have been Corner Angie, and I have been completely useless here, so... Bye-bye! This has been Kitsune Risu. This has been Forever Free Brony. And we'll see you next week with more awesomeness from people that I do not know yet and soon to be known. And, um, Guni, mind playing us out? I don't know. Awesome. Getting hard to write And late into the night It's been a while now I tossed the mail around I hope you've been alright I'm eager just to know point I go Cause I can tell you now I've made my way around But I never seem to grow You can see right through this letter And all the tears are clear the show Be for the better But I just thought I'd let you know
Dude, I didn't even know that this was just the guest thing. You didn't even tell me. You gotta tell oh, me. I, I thought you were on earlier so we could talk. What were you oh, doing? I, I don't wake up at 10 a.m. Who right, the hell wakes up at 10 a.m.? <laughs> Human. Sorry, that was my brother. Okay, no problem. Who, okay. who, who in this world, who the hell wakes up before, like, before 10, like, on a Sunday? Military men. I, yeah, you know what? I was in the military and I never woke up at 10 a.m., right? I always slept through. My sergeants would get pissed off with me and I'd be like, eh. <laughs> I, Why are you I, me? I wake up at like 7.30 on yeah. every Sunday to go see, to church. You, are, you, you see, you're weird. You're a musician. Okay, <laughs> musicians are weird. Right? Uh, just 